Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here on a day where our pastor is absent. I'm not sure why I was chosen or even volunteered to read the sermon, but uh, it is what it is, right? And you've heard that expression before. The pastor is off uh, with the youth at, uh, in Grand Forks for the youth gathering, and uh, today's uh, sermon uh, was written by Pastor Scott Braille. Um, I believe he's from Foothills, if I'm not mistaken, in Calgary. And it has to do with their gathering, more or less, and all the things that affect us as well as a result of that. Our text for mediation, uh, meditation, and the theme verse for the youth gathering in, Fork, in Grand Forks is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. <clears throat> now just before I start reading the, the prepared text here, I uh, just want to say that um, most of us in some form or other have had experience in youth gatherings in our church and uh, for myself as well as uh, some others of you, it's been a great blessing to have had a, a grounding of our faith in the youth programs that are so important to us. And I know that, uh, for example, Adele Yeager helped very much when, at the time when I was uh, growing up through this church. You now, it hasn't necessarily made me a better Christian, <laughs> because I know that as sinners we have a lot to, to struggle through as we go through life, but uh, anyway, here goes. Now, no one knows what tomorrow holds, uh, except God, of course. He knows that even in eternity from now, we who believe will be living in Christ. We make plans, for sure, thinking we ought to do this chore, hoping to do that hobby. We know what must be done, but even the most urgent of agenda items is still entirely tentative until it has come and gone, checked off of our to-do list because life happens entirely on its own, apart from our plans and intentions. We can neither predict what tomorrow holds, let alone truly prepare for it. The world tries to sell us a cure to everything that would come our way and ruin our day. Do this diet, an exercise routine to reset your body, ensuring it is able to carry on strong in spite of aging and illness. And those of us who are aging certainly know what that is all about. Reset your daily schedule to this regime uh, to give you the foundation to become your best self, taking control of your time so you can start your business. Learn these communication techniques to get through any conflict in your marriage with your boss, with the parent-teacher association. We could sit here and come up with 10,000 self-help programs and pamphlets to address what people in the world know is going awry. We all see the cracks in our relationships, in our bodies, in our ambitions, in our lives. So we come up with a plan to address them before it's too late. We want to act before the world sees just how broken we actually are, before our brokenness wrecks havoc on our hopes for tomorrow. This weekend, a bunch of teenagers and adults who care for them and their salvation in eternity are gathered together to hear about the impact that Christ has made on their lives. This is the Impact Youth Gathering our youth group is attending. They are hearing about the comprehensive gift of the gospel as it addresses their fears and needs in their everyday life. 
The hope of the gospel does not just look forward to eternity, but assures us that our God is caring for us in the here and now. The Lord knows our fears and our needs and daily provides for us. But can you imagine just how complex and momentous are the fears and the needs of the teenagers at the youth gathering? Am I loved? Am I lovable? Who can I trust? Why is my life like this? What does my future look like? And what should it look and what should it even look like? Without my even thinking about it. And certainly today there are lots of distractions for our youth. And it's probably even harder than when I was in youth uh, here at this church many, many years ago. Our world is changing at a rapid pace, and even we are trying to find our place in that. You're well aware that the future is scary because it is unknown. So you react and adapt to try and master it and make it your own. You lived through your rough teenage years only to find out that very little changes. You survived this time, that change, and every subsequent big decision and little decision that gave you fear, only to realize that tomorrow never becomes certain. Your sin and weakness get into the fray and mess up all you hope for. You can even end up enduring the consequences of your choice of words and actions for years. And if it isn't your own fault that the future doesn't pan out, the world will ensure it makes its mark. The ideas, simple or otherwise, in your life will influence your coming days. The chaos of a broken, certain, sorry, the chaos of a broken creation will change your future. Try as you might, your days as close as tomorrow, as distant as eternity, are not in your hands. But Peter, in the gathering's theme verse, promises a future. It is not based on what fearful sinners can do, but what has been done for them. It is not dependent on what today holds, or even what tomorrow brings. Our salvation is flowing out of the past from what Christ has already accomplished. Therefore, we can hope in an eternity of tomorrows with certainty. St. Peter proclaims that we, living in fear and uncertainty, have been born again into a living hope. It might not seem like God has redeemed our lives through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It might feel like Christ has made no impact upon our days. Peter is well aware that we as Christians are enduring immeasurable hardships while awaiting the fullness of what we hope in, namely our resurrection and the restoration of creation. But Peter persists in proclaiming the hope that was given to us when we heard the gospel. God's promise, or God's promises, the consequences of Christ's death and resurrection remain true even through the hardest times and even during the most uncertain periods of life. The exact future of Hope Lutheran Church is itself uncertain at this time as we are attempting to decide it. Yet we as the people of God can rest assured in what Christ is giving to us. The inheritance we have received in Christ is imperishable undefiled and unfading. Everything else in this world is passing away, but in Christ our salvation is everlasting. The time which Christ rose from the dead was but for a moment, but its effects last eternally. Because Christ was risen from the dead, those who are united to him through faith are raised from death. Because Jesus lives and reigns to all eternity, 
so will we experience the blessing of our kingdom forever. Christ has changed our history forever. There is no uncertainty for us anymore in Christ our Lord. We know exactly what will happen to us. And as we get older, that is our reassurance. And so it should be. We will be rejected by this world and suffer. And we will also be given the strength to endure through God's grace as we do. On the last day, we will enter into the fullness of God's promises and live in bodies imperishable, undefiled, and unfading because our bodies and souls live in the inheritance of eternal life. And to match the unfading nature of our hope, the message of hope rings out without fading as imperishable and undefiled. Christ is risen from the dead. And those words, if you, if, for the, I'm going to deviate for a second here, but if you remember the crowning of King Charles III in Westminster Abbey and the Bishop of Canterbury saying, our Christ has risen. And 2,500 people saying, he has risen in me. That was a powerful message as to what we believe in. Amen. Let this be preached into our ears over and over that he has risen and to keep our hope present in our minds and the minds of our congregations used. God gives and guards by his own power through his word. It's not up to us, but the one who is almighty. Therefore, never let, let us never make worldly gifts into distractions from our true hope in Christ. Nor may we let the world give us uncertainty in Christ's resurrection. Christ who is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading is guarding your inheritance of an imperishable, undefiled, and unfading salvation. Our Lord even guards your faith and will certainly do so until the last day when he returns and you receive that for which you hope. The forgiveness of your sins, salvation won for you on Calvary's cross, and the eternity with your triune God is assured for you because Christ is raised from the dead in his name.